Wednesday on Home and Family, actor Cameron Matheson from the Hallmark Channel original movie At Home in Midford is here. And Pop's nightcap actress, Allie Wentworth, joins us. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. So eggnog, it's the rich, creamy drink we love to have at Christmas time. But where did it come from and how do we make it? Here with all the answers is Dan Kohler. And joining us for your segment, Dan, is a very, very special guest, the guest of honor who has just arrived on his sleigh from the <laughs> North all Pole the with Came all his reindeer, <laughs> Mr. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Santa Claus. Well, Santa, I know you know all about eggnog, but just entertain us for a little while and let us hear from our, yes, our kitchen yes. scientist. Other people always make it for me, so I'm curious to see. Oh, yeah. okay, that's right. Others have always made it for you. So when did we first drink, start drinking eggnog here in America? You know, believe it or not, eggnog has a really great American history. Our very first president had a recipe for eggnog. George Washington made his, and it was so Ooh. boozy. It had whiskey oh. and brandy <laughs> and rum and cognac in it. So we've scaled a little bit back. back. We've scaled back a little bit from our first president. He Did it have milk or eggs? Lunch. It also had milk and eggs, oh, but, okay. but it was heavy on the booze. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. All right. Where'd it come from before that, though? Before that, eggnog sort of has a tricky path, but all historians agree it comes from a British drink called posset. Now, posset was a warm milk or cream drink that was curdled with ale or wine and then seasoned with wintry spices. And it was often served as uh, a remedy for colds, much like we would drink a hot toddy these days. Oh. Um, and in the 13th century, posset gets thickened with figs and eggs. And that's the first time you have something that is beginning to look like eggnog. Okay, so the word eggnog. Yes, Debbie. Nog, I always <laughs> thought was noggin. Mm -hmm. Your head. So, egghead? Well, it's what a very strange, <laughs> it's a very strange word. It's a very strange word. Nog in the uh, Oxford English Dictionary actually means a very strong ale that was brewed in the eastern part of England centuries ago. And uh, noggin uh, was actually a word that was used for a small wooden cup that you would drink alcohol out of. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So the eggs... So is that why our... <laughs> Our heads are... Are we considered a noggin? Well, you might be. <laughs> <laughs> you know what, Orly? Yeah, thank you. We deserve that. Okay. Yes, we do. Delicious. I guess Santa good? just added somebody to the naughty list. Um, yeah, I, no, let me add. Egg nog so, I'm a little confused. There's eggs in it. Are they raw mm. eggs? If they are, are they mm. safe? I make mine with raw eggs. Now, if that's something you're worried about, let's talk about salmonella what? very quickly. Eggs. Not every egg in the world has salmonella. The USDA uh, estimates that about one in every 20,000 eggs oh, might goodness. be contaminated. Still don't want to take Which out. means that yeah. you <laughs> might encounter one every 84 years. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and we're okay. also worried about salmonella. Now, if you are, if you are scared <laughs> yeah. of it and you do have a, a, a compromised immune system, that's something to be worried about. So I'm using a, uh, an immersion circulator here to pasteurize my eggs. You can bring it up to 130, uh, 131 degrees, cook these for two hours. They're still going to look like they're raw eggs, but they're pasteurized. If you don't have this at home, do it on your stove, 140 degrees for uh, three minutes, you're good to go. Now right. let's actually okay. get to let's make, make, make the eggnog. So those are your pasteurized eggs. The heat doesn't make it a hard boiled egg? Yeah, I was just saying. <laughs> yeah, you would think. What's, that's right? interesting. No. What's boiling temp? Or even poached? 212 is, is boiling. 212. I yeah. love that you get it to 140. Know that. <laughs> don't, don't you know? Doesn't everybody know? know? So the first thing you do is you start beating, <laughs> uh, right. it's hard. beating those eggs until they're nice and Anna, creamy. The and then I <laughs> slowly put in the sugar right, right through the little yeah, hole. We want to get it nice and ribbony. I use super fine sugar here. It's going to dissolve much more easily. Okay. At about that texture, you can start pouring in the booze, and I use cognac and rum. Why? Oh, wow. I like the flavor combination, to be honest. And, you know, I'm taking a little note from our uh, our first president. If he was doing That's a couple of booze, why can't we? Why? <laughs> <laughs> and this is exactly what we're drinking, what you're making. This is, You are drinking that exactly. This is lovely. It's then really after good, that, right? I yeah. pour in milk and heavy cream while it's still running. A good diet oh recipe, then. Goodness. Oh, yes. <laughs> no. Eggnog is not for the, uh, not, not, not a weak drink at all. No. After I've never this, tried eggnog not for the before. calorie sensitive. Not for the calorie sensitive at all. <laughs> Blend this together, it is, it is. put it in the fridge. That's what I've got here. I let it rest overnight, which is uh, actually an interesting. So it doesn't separate. Uh, it doesn't separate. Now, eggnog used to always be rested because it turns out alcohol can kill salmonella. Oh. So eggnog used to be rested for up to three weeks or even a couple of months. People would people would let it sit in their in their cooler, in their refrigerator, in their cellar sure. for a couple of months. Uh, researchers have recently done some research. After three weeks. 
uh, alcohol completely kills eggnog, uh, completely it, salmonella. Is that nutmeg you just put on? I put a little bit of fresh nutmeg on it. Oh, wow. oh fancy. A toast to the season. I love yeah. the yeah. Christmas wow. in July. Cheers. And by the way, cheers, cheers to the, I know. I just have to say cheers to the um, sprouting inspired Santa beard you've got going on there. I think right. it's the starter kit. It's, it's a fantastic. Future, my future career. What fantastic. What do you think, Santa? I, I think I might have a job for you at the North Pole. <laughs> <laughs> We're coming right back. Santa has some answers for your questions next. Good job, man.